Hi, here's Chris. I had the opportunity to do some research and self edutainment how to work with Blender's geometry nodes. In this video, I show you one of my results. If you like, you can use the link in the video description and download this geometry node tree for free. So let's see what I've done. Here I have a simple Suzanne basic model. It has a subdivision modifier on it. And what we do now is we will create some scenes. Okay, so by geometry nodes tree create scenes based on edges. So you can select some edges and create scenes. Before we start, I tell you what we need to do this. First, we have the mesh, in this uh, case it's Suzanne, and then I blend it off, or switch it off, here is it. And then you have a collection with seams. Uh, these are seam objects, or the objects that have to be used for seams, okay? So I've uh, edited or uh, modeled some, some seam objects, and you can see them here. To, to work with seams or to use them, you have to uh, be aware of the center of the seam. So you have to uh, create a seam element that has the center here at this position. The same is here, you see. The center is not on the base, on the starting point. It's in the center or in the upper part of this uh, element. Okay, <clears throat> so you can uh, place as many seams as you want in this collection and uh, you can hide this collection for example so it's uh, no problem if you hide them to use uh, my geometry notes tree good before we uh, start we need the geometry tr uh, tree and you have to append it um, and append a node tree and uh, after you have downloaded my geometry nodes and then the geometry notes tree is inside the scene scene and you click on this mesh or on your mesh and add a modifier, a um, geometry nodes modifier. The geometry nodes modifier is red first because there is no node tree added to this geometry nodes modifier. And because we have appended my tree, you can find it now here in this pull down icon. And this time it's called CW Mesh Outer Seams. After you have activated this tree, the tree is add it to this mesh and you can use these options here to create seams. Before you create the seams you need uh, information where the scene collection is placed. So the scene collection is a collection with scene objects. So I've shown you the objects are here in my collection. It's called seams. So I have to set the path here to seams. Okay, now the seams will be taken into account or taken to uh, use in the geometry node tree and uh, this tree knows this uh, content here is used here in this tree. So we have uh, no seams here added because there is no edges uh, defined to show seams. So to do this, you uh, go here into the object data properties of the mesh and then you set vertex groups. Why you do this? Because you can um, create as many seam modifiers as you want. So at the moment I have just one geometry nodes modifier with seams, but you can do uh, or add more modifiers to do seams. Okay, let's go back to the vertex groups. Now I select, for example, the seams here around. So this is a seam that go once around and I use this as a seam. To do this, I create a new vertex group here and I call it circled seam. You can use any name. This, uh, this uh, it's not a problem. A uh, wait, uh, seam. So, okay, this is the seam and I assign it here to this uh, vertices. So if you select them, you can see it's here. So this is the name of the vertex group for this seams. Now I go back to my modifiers and now I have to choose this vertex group. So my modifier here knows 
where the seams have to be placed. Okay. To do this, I do here in the seams vertex group. Um, if you go over these values, the most of them have a tooltip. I place a tooltip so you can see create a vertex group on the surface mesh to mark seams. And you can use this uh, tooltips to know what you have to do here. So first we do this and we cannot do something here with this value. We could, but then uh, all seams will get, if I, if I place it to one, all seams will be uh, created and uh, and so then get this seams here, a, a lot of seams. But what I want to do is not to use a value of one. I want to use my vertex collection or uh, my vertex group. And th in this case, I click on this small icon and now uh, I switch off to an empty input field. And this field, if you click on this field, it shows you the possible uh, data you can use. And I see now here my point data, my circled seam. It's here the vertices I've created before. And now I can use it here. And now you see this seems that uh, this vertex group is, is now placed on this edge here okay so now what you can do now is uh, for example you have uh, a lot of options here the most easiest to understand is the custom material uh, at the moment we use a material for the seam that is used for the object itself but you can if you want use another material for example here in yellow material and to to activate this custom material you have to you have to um, wait, you have to switch it on. So we do this here, custom material active. You, pl you click or you switch to one. And now you see this means the custom material have to be active and it is this, this one, okay? Or, or another one um, here, this one or this one. You can choose between any material you have in your material library. So I go back to the basic or the default material that is added here. So the next is we see uh, we can uh, do a shift so we can shift the position we can go up or down if you want so if you want to make some some adjustments here you can do this with this value the shifting then we have a distance uh, it means you can set the distance between the seams at the moment you see um, all my seams I have here in this collection will be taken into account and will be placed here. And the, the order is uh, the order how the objects are named or placed here in the collection. So first will be taken this uh, seam part and this one and this one. So that means this one first and this one and this one and so on. So the, the order here is uh, interesting for your placement if you use a default setting, okay? So let's see what we can do more. We can uh, set the distance, as, as I said, so the distance will be here. And then we can, uh, we have a rotation, so we can rotate the seams locally uh, in different, uh, different directions here. So you can see it here like this, for example. Um, then we can use a user random rotation. What does it mean? It's the random, I can set it on and uh, if you set it to zero, nothing will happen. With one, the random rotation will be activated. But as you can see, nothing happened. The reason is why? Because I use the user rotation values as a random value for this mode. So for example, when I rotate this one to, let's say 15 degrees, then I switch the random value off, then you see, or well, let's say 30 degrees, all elements will be rotated in 30 degrees or minus 30 depending what you want but this random value does the following if you switch it on so the object here will be rotated into between minus 30 degrees and 30 degrees i show it to you here let's say this is the line where at zero degrees the, the default and if you place 30 it means it will be placed 30 degree into the plus direction and 30 maximum of 13 degrees in the minus minus direction is this one okay so this is this is what the random rotation does and the random rotation will be done for every single 
same object. Okay, great. So if you place it to five, for example, so it will be placed only a little bit. Why we do we have more than one value? Because you this, uh, the random value here is um, is also um, a speed for this. Okay, if I set 15, so I can switch the seed, and you see the the objects are different rotated. So the higher the amount, the more different seeds you have. Okay, and zero means all is off, and you have the regular rotation. And the random rotation is for all these three values here. Good. The next one is user scale. It's very easy. You can scale the objects as you want, bigger or smaller. Then we have a theme select object. This is very interesting. Um, at the moment, we use all our theme objects to create or to place them here onto the theme. Let's say, what if you want to just use one of them? So do you do this here, theme select object? So the zero means all objects of this collection will be taken into account. And if you say one, for example, the first one will be taken. The first one in this collection is this cross theme here. And if you do two, it will be the second one will be taken. And three, the third one will be taken. Okay. Now you can, uh, in this way, you can switch through your themes and can use one single collection for different themes. Okay. And again, you have all this possibility to, to say, uh, random rotation and so on. Okay. This is all possible now to also good. Um, and if you go a higher value, then the first one will be taken again. So I have here only three objects and because number f there's no object uh, that is called four, the first one will be taken again. So this is just the same. This is just what's happening here. So this seems selecting, uh, here, the select objects option can select one of the objects you want to use. Then uh, we have a random order. So if we use all themes in this collection, we can switch the random order on. And now you see, uh, as soon as you have the value one, the, the theme parts will be placed randomly or random. The second one or more values means different seats for the, the for random placement. Okay. So this can be done also. So, okay. Zero. Then we have a uh, theme shift start. So, okay. Let's see. What does this mean? Um, in, in this case, let's uh, create another, um, theme. And in this way I am, um, or now I show you how you can use different notes or different themes on one object. So what you can do all of course is you can, create theme and you can add this to this selection to this vertex group and now you have here a theme but you can also create a new selection group I, I remove it from this one and create a new group my second themes for example assign it to here and now I go back to my modifiers and now I just duplicate this modifier here and tell it second themes Okay, and you now see uh, this group is used because it's the same group that was used here and I've duplicated it now and I switch to, oh, sorry, I switch to uh, second themes. Okay, now we have two different uh, theme parts. Uh, the first one here, the circled theme in the front and the second one, it's the second themes vertex group here. To, to differ between them, you can uh, choose another mode and this one I select the first. Okay, let's say this first theme here. And you see, I have now this kind of themes here and this kind of themes here. Maybe I switch them to yellow so we can see the difference. So you so to, to create uh, different themes, I use different vertex groups. Okay, this is what is it, uh, what you need to do with different themes. Oh, I talked too much. So let's see again what shift start means. It's actually very easy to understand. You can sh you can choose or defer the starting point for this scene and animate it if you want. And the same can be done for the end theme. So the start in this case is here and the end is here. And you can use these values to, for example, uh, adjust a little bit the length 
of the selected theme element here. And um, as you can see, uh, when I when I go back to my circle theme here, then I see the shift uh, start and end doesn't work. This is a small limitation of my geometry nodes, but I found a solution to break this. To do this, you can see it here, theme break circled. And this is one circled theme, it's a circle. And to break it, you go to one, and now it's broken, as you can see here. I break it. And now you have the ability to change the starting point here or the end point here. Okay, so you can choose and now start and end this elements. Great. Okay, so now here and below the last options are just some debugging uh, points or debugging options like hide scenes. You can hide the mesh, for example, and you just see the scene. And now you can show a curve. Um, the curve is the curve where the seams are placed. So I hide the seams and now you see this is a curve or a, a curve where the seams are placed on for debugging. Um, okay, and now as the last one is yeah, is a custom material active or not. Okay, this is all. Okay, I hope you, I hope you like this uh, small free geometry nodes tree. Maybe you can use it in your projects. And uh, I wish you a lot of fun with my Geometry Notes 3. Bye-bye to the next time.